So as I was approaching East Economy Parking, as I was approaching East Economy Parking, I ran out of space on the Obama Phone 3. I'm now on the Sky Phone. Um, or sorry, the Blue Phone. Sorry, Sky and Blue are the same word to me when I'm this close to a breakdown. Um, it's a blue phone because the sky is blue and, and it's blue. It's called BLU. So we're at Terminal 4 and that's Terminal 4 short-term parking that I'm looking out at, at the train level. So I got a text message while I was asleep last night from, uh, from Samantha. It said, Hey Daniel, just checking to see if your car is working and if you'll be available to work your shift tomorrow night. Let me know, thanks. And that came at 11.37. Now I went into hibernation sleep due to, due to having sort of a mental breakdown and, and, and just probably just a burnout working working too much and not being able to maintain a regular sleep schedule, although I've, because of my mental health, I've never been able to maintain a regular sleep schedule. It's one of the struggles of being me, but um, I, I feel like I've, I, don't, I don't know what time I fell asleep. It was after I got home, not long after I got home, after all the panic attacks at Circle K. I don't know how many hours I slept, but it was probably more than 12. But I woke up, I'm not really sure what time I woke up because my iPhone was dead because I couldn't find a lightning cable to plug it in. All I could find was USB-C cables. So the blue phone didn't get plugged in because it's micro USB. It's, that's the new Terminal 3 there. I mean, they, when they renovated it, they used some of the old Terminal, but most of Terminal 3 is, is new. Consequently, I get lost with the biggest shit in Terminal 3. Camelback Mountain out on the horizon. To the right, Squat Peak off to the left. It's called something else now. It starts with a P. It's named after a female Native American soldier of some kind to be some kind of a retribution for the word squaws and how being a slur against female Native Americans. It's my understanding that the origin of that word was a, an actual Native American word for woman. So, but I guess woman is now a divisive and slur term. And women have told me that female is, is somehow derogatory. And I don't get that. I don't find male. Derogatory. Oh wow, what a cool looking little plane. So right now I'm, I'm over where Terminal 2 used to be, all this empty space underneath me that's got stuff parked in it. Where Terminal 2 used to be, that, that little parking lot there, the two level parking lot, that was Terminal 2 short term parking, which was directly across from the terminal. When I was a kid and I used to fly in and out of Sky Harbor and when my parents passed me back and forth between Wyoming and Phoenix, um, Terminal 2 was Sky Harbor Airport. So, yeah, the airport that I remember is now gone. And this, this east side with the two one-way streets, you see a lot of traffic on that. So, Sky Harbor Drive that used to be the original entrance. You know, Terminal 2 was the airport and that was the road going in and out of the airport, Sky Harbor Drive. Which still sort of connects with Buckeye Road right there below me. Those things that I got confused on the other day trying to go to work. So we're coming up on 24th Street Station. Sometime I need to take a ride to the station to just get out. I'm not sure what we're going under right now. It's weird, it's only like a half bridge. 
That was so weird. Like I thought it was a bridge going over, but then the, the next track over didn't have anything over it. I can't, I can't make that make sense in my head at all. Okay, so we're going over Copperhead Road or Drive or whatever it is. This is called the signs to say Copperhead, which is where 24th Street used to be before they realigned it. Or 22nd Street used to be. Now we're pulling into 24th Street Station. Execute for 24th Street Station. Which might, might not be very usable at all because it looks like all the accesses to it are not built yet. This, this station is barely open. Uh, I'm looking behind me and I don't see anybody getting in or out at this station. Next stop, so. rental car center. I'm thinking the station is more of a visionary thing now than actually a useful thing. Please stay clear of the doors. Because you can see the road connecting to it is in the process of being built. At this point, Sky Harbor Boulevard is the freeway looking thing up above and kind of raised. And the road down below with a lot of traffic on it. That's Buckeye Road. There's a plane taxi, a uh, plane going up for a landing. Next stop, rental car center. That's some kind of bus maintenance yard. I see Valley Metro. Oh, yeah. Next stop, Phoenix Airport shuttles center. and stuff. Oh, I see some of those buses painted up like Valley Metro. Okay, there's 24th Street where its current alignment is at 2200 East. And that's the Greyhound Station. Now, granted, 24th Street Station is good connectivity to the Greyhound Station, but that's not something that's mentioned on the overhead speaker because. The airport doesn't want the riffraff that rides Greyhound entering it or any of its amenities because, you know, classism and stuff. And, and I'm still really fascinated by the whole, like, people that use Greyhound being lower class than people who fly because at this point it's more expensive to take Greyhound than it is to fly. That's something I, that really hit home when I took my trip last year to Portland. It was much, much cheaper to fly, even with me buying the tickets on a last minute notice through Priceline.com using the Priceline app. And I don't know, maybe what maintains that classism is the fact that I'm at least a high enough class that I have bank accounts and credit card accounts and, and, and such as they are and, and can use services like Priceline.com. And I guess those who don't and can't are forced to go to Greyhound and pay cash even though it's substantially more expensive at this point, and then take a whole lot longer, much more squalid conditions getting to their destination. It really is all classism. The address on that building is 1820, I'm assuming 1820 East. Oh, probably Sky Harbor Way. We're actually entering into the rental car center. Did you see all connectivity to the rental car center is off Sky Harbor Circle? Please hold on. Even though it's on 16th Street, everything connecting to 16th Street has been cut off. Like, there's no connectivity to 16th Street because 16th Street is too low class. All right, we're here. And I was hoping I would have a single video of the trip here so I would, so I would know exactly how long it takes to get to 44th Street Station. To the rental car station, which is the two ends of the SkyTrain line. I was hoping I'd have a single video for that, but unfortunately I don't. But hey, I know it's nine minutes from Terminal 4. And I'm sure if I go through my, my, uh, I'm sure if I go through my vlog, I've got plenty of videos where I go from 44th Street Station to Terminal 4, so I can, I can do the math. I think we're looking at about 18 minutes. Let's just be honest, it's a little bit, well, maybe not like 15 minutes. It's a little bit longer than I thought it would be. In my mind, I pictured it being quicker, but something about the SkyTrain just always feels really quick just because it's such a nice ride. If I hadn't noticed this, they've turned this into all pedestrian and they've put poles up so people can't drive through this. But it used to be... And there's a cop sitting there making sure nobody's trying to drive through. 
But you can see the infrastructure here. This used to be a vehicular loop, and there's still signs up with, you know, digital signs with the different rental car agencies' names on them. I hadn't noticed that they'd cut this off until just now. I would imagine the ramp coming up here is completely cut off as well. I kind of want to walk that way and look. But this used to be a circular drive for the buses and the shuttles and the uh, and just people, people to pick. Like, like say you were dropping somebody off to rent a car, this would be where the passenger drop-off was. Now it's been completely cut off and eliminated. That's fascinating. I mean, you can see, just looking at this, that this was the infrastructure for, for a loop with passenger drop-off stops and little, little stops, you know, doesn't it stops on the curb for passenger drop-off and big, bold signs, which are still lit up and, you know, digital signs lit up indicating which, which car rental desks you're closest to when you stop at them. And then there was a crossing here, which is a return, just in case you drove all the way around and you saw the one that you wanted, but you missed it. You could turn, you turn left and then come back over that overpassing and make a pass again. Uh, and the new signs, as you see, they're put up with so much permanence. That's, wow, <laughs> classy. Um, this is the ramp that went up. Of course, it connected to to Sky Harbor uh, Sky Harbor Circle, as opposed to uh, 16th Street, because everything's completely cut off from 16th Street in this facility. There's this riffraff on 16th Street. That's where the pores are. We don't want the pores in there, except for pores like myself that work here. That looks really cool. The sky can, the air traffic control tower, how it jets up. An elevator to somewhere. So weird how they've completely eliminated the passenger drop-off loop that yeah. used to be here. Remember how you used to come here and drop everybody off? Yes. And all the signs are still there, all lit up. Isn't that weird? That is weird. <laughs> I just noticed that. I work here. Nothing up here but one random cop just to make sure no crazy shit happens. <laughs> yeah, this so the circular driveway used to be really, really busy. And it was mostly shuttles. Um, like there was airport shuttles and stuff that would pick up here. I can't believe I, I've been in and out of this several times in the last couple of weeks and I can't believe I just now noticed that this has been completely cut off and the other side I'm not going to walk to the other side it's just kind of like a mirror image of this with the side that people drove out and as you can see there's digital signs above still lit up to let the people that no longer drive through here know that you know here's where you pull out for Avis and Payless and then Enterprise and Hertz National Alamo thrifty and budget I don't see dollar. Not that it matters. <laughs> like it's bizarre these signs. Oh, there it is, dollar at the last one. It's interesting how dollar is over there with budget and thrifty is there. There, as opposed to being attached to Hertz, since thrifty and dollar are both both um, they're the budget brands for uh, for Hertz. Which honestly, I didn't know until I got here. So I like these little kiosk spots. I think I'm going to pop a squad over at this one here. They're, they're building a little food court mall over here. This is coming soon. But right now, there's just one little food stand, which I've become really fond of. As I've mentioned before, like between 10 and 11, they have half price sandwiches. So I can get a really nice sandwich for like five bucks. Oh, wow. That looks like they are there. I thought they didn't open till 11. I think I'm going to go walk over and talk to the girls and ask them if they're open because it was my understanding they didn't open until 10 and it's only 726. 
But on the other side of the sandwich stand, there's another spot like this, which I chilled at uh, during my uh, lunch break yesterday, where there's just a bunch of chairs and you can just kind of pop a squat and get comfortable. And more importantly, behind the chairs, a little hidden, you got power outlets and USB A hole power outlets. So I was able to, you know, juice up my phones and, and use the Wi-Fi in here, which is pretty good. Although, as I was trying to mention earlier, I had an issue with the Wi-Fi. I get, I get about 90% of my video uploaded to YouTube, and then it cut me off. I don't know if it just felt I had used too much data or what. And then when I reconnected to my hotspot off Obama Phone 5, which is painfully slow, um, it started back over at zero, even though it was like 90% uploaded. At least that kind of did it, handled itself when I got to, uh, that kind of handled itself when I got to, um, what do you call it? I got to, got home. Because I mean, mentally I was kind of broke down. I, I did, I, I remember I had to manipulate my, I, I had to, I had to shut off the hotspot on Obama Phone 5. But then I think once the hotspot was shut off, I think my iPhone just automatically looked for internet and was like, oh, here we go, this, this is, this Wi-Fi is fast. And it always works, and of course that means my home Wi-Fi, which is passworded, but it has the password saved in it. Which is a good thing, because I don't know the password. I don't know that password. I know places where I can find it, but I don't know it offhand. All right, I'm gonna go talk to the ladies over at the stand and find out why they're here so early when I was told they didn't open in until 10.